is Max Trombley, and I am here to describe the propane solenoid power reduction circuit that my father and I manufacture, as well as how to install it. So first of all, um, we make a propane solenoid power reduction circuit that works with Winnebago VIEW, Navion, Travato, as well as a number of other RVs that have a liquid propane valve switch on the inside of the vehicle. The purpose of this circuit is to reduce the power draw from 20 ampere hours a day to between 2 and 3 ampere hours a day. Uh, this will greatly extend your battery life if you're boondocking. Um, and uh, it's a great mod to add for those of you that like to uh, camp off grid. Um, so anyway, when you order one of these parts from us, you'll get a bag. And inside the bag, there's two parts. And so I'm going to describe what these parts are and how they work. Additionally, in order to install this part, there's a number of tools that you'll need. Uh, that inc they include a knife, a small Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of pliers, some tape, and either a heat gun, a hair dryer, or some electrical tape. And I'll get to that in a few. So, in order to save some time on this installation, I've already begun removing these uh, switches, but I will go through the process right now. So the first thing you do is take a knife or your fingernails and you pop the backs off so that you can remove these covers. And once you have the cover removed, this one's really important. On your propane valve switch, you have an on position and an off position. You need to label this. When you remove this cover, uh, the switch behind it is not gonna have on off written on it. So in order to make sure you put your switch back in the correct way, either take a Sharpie marker or your screwdriver. And when you remove the cover, you want to make a mark. So what I've done is I've just put a little scratch here with my screwdriver. A Sharpie would be better and easier to see. So once you've made the mark that corresponds to the on position, you can put your cover down. And now the next thing you need to do is you want to remove the screws that are keeping these switches in place. Oh, I, uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but before you do any of this, you need to make sure the power in your vehicle is turned on. My switch is down by the staircase and is already on. Uh, you can confirm that by hitting the switch for the holding tank and the light will go on. So anyway, once you've removed your screws, your propane valve switch needs to be in the off position. So you've marked where the on position is, make sure it's on the off position. And you're gonna make sure that you have access to the wires that are behind these switches. And what I suggest is that you pull these out just enough so that you have access to both of them. Um, this is gonna be where you install the circuit and I'll explain exactly how to know which wire uh, you're going to use. So going back to what comes in the bag, you have the circuit itself and you have a meter. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of tape and I'm going to tape the meter to the wall right here and this will make it easier for me to see. Now once the meter is taped to the wall and the switch is in the off position, what I need to do is I need to figure out which wire is coming from the battery and which wire is going to the solenoid. So in order to do that, I am going to take the wires and I'm going to touch them to the contacts on either side. Now if I touch the contacts and nothing happens on the meter, what I need to do is I need to switch the wires. So switch them around and I'm going to try it again. And the second time, there you go. Now the meter is showing 13.3. What that means is when this meter is active, that means that this red wire is the one that is connected to the battery. So that's good news. If the red wire is touching this bottom one, that's connected to the battery. That means the black wire was connected to this top one, which is connected to the solenoid. So it's this top one, which is where I need to connect that circuit. So pushing this meter aside for a second, I'm gonna slide this back. You might need pliers for this if it's tight. Um, so once I've removed this, I'll let that sit there. I'm gonna grab the circuit. So to install this circuit, 
There's three points of contact. The female end of the circuit is going to connect to the back of the solenoid switch. The male end of the circuit is going to connect to the wire that goes off to the solenoid. Now this is where you need a heat gun, hair dryer, or electrical tape. You're going to slide up the, uh, the shrink wrap that's included. If, uh, if you don't have a heat gun or a hair dryer that will melt this, you can just wrap some electrical tape around it. That's important. Now lastly, what you're going to do is you're going to take the ground and you're going to send the ground wire over here to this holding tank heater switch, which has an LED on it, and because of that LED, it has a ground. I will explain what to do if you don't have the switch in a second. So, once you've got your ground wire through, looking at the back of this holding tank switch, you have your, uh, you have your ground coming in right here. So, white wire. yeah, the white wire is the ground. So, the way that this ground wire works is that it goes in between the back of a switch and the wire. So anyway, what you do to make it easy is I'm going to attach it to the ground wire first. And then I'm going to attach it to the back. And it's a little tight, so I'm going to do that. And then that is secured. And now I'm going to push this back in. And reconnect that. Now I'm going to pause here to explain. Um, if you do not have a holding tank heater switch with a ground on it, uh, your backup plan is to go down here to your thermostat and on the back of your thermostat there is a ground. Um, to get to your thermostat what you do is you remove this entire panel and it'll drop down and you can, you can connect the ground wire down here. Um, but most vehicles that I've done these installations in do have this switch, and so you should hopefully have that. So anyway, once you've installed the ground, and you can screw your LED switch, your holding tank switch back in, the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to take this circuit and you're going to push it back behind. And now here's the part where this is, you had previously marked the on position. You want the on position to be up higher. Uh, so make sure that your marking is up and you're going to take your screws and reinstall those and once you've screwed everything back together you can snap your covers back on and the last thing is you want to test it so your power should still be on if that's the case you hit your on switch and when you hit your on switch, you should be able to listen and hear your propane valve open and close. Um, and anyway, so once this is installed, everything is done. Uh, in order for it to work, it just simply works. Uh, it sits behind your switch, and when you turn the switch on, it operates. When you turn the switch off, it is, uh, it's in the off position. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that this installation video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at maxmakesparts at gmail.com. Thank you.